Knowing how to write clean, flexible and readable code is one of the most important parts of making games and coding in general. Through my game development journey I have learned about many techniques and patterns that you can use to write high quality code. The main part of making your code clean, at least in my opinion, is decoupling it, which means that you are just splitting it into smaller parts that you should also be able to use just on their own. The first pattern that we can use to achieve that is the composition pattern, which means that you are not putting all your code into one script. Instead, you will split it into multiple scripts that can all work on their own and you can just change them independently. So let's say that we have a player and an enemy. The movement of the player and the enemy is the same, they can both shoot, attack, have some health, stamina and so on. The only thing that is different here is how they are getting the input. The player is getting the input from the user and the enemy is getting the input from the CPU. So we could have one script that would be the same for the player and for the enemy that would be just managing the movement, the shooting, the health and then we could have a second script that would be different for the player and the enemy which would be just managing the input. So this is a great example of the composition pattern. You can always use one script for the movement, for the shooting and then just decide which input you will give it. The second technique which allows you to achieve pretty much the same thing as with the composition is inheritance. When you have many scripts and you found out that they are sharing some functionality, you can make a class that will be parent of all of the other classes and it will have the functions, variables and all of the stuff that those classes had in common and the other classes will derive from it. What this means is that the base class is holding some data that is same for all of the classes that are deriving from it, but the children classes can also add their own functions and variables that they need to use. This can be again used on an example of an enemy. So for all of our enemies, we probably want to have some health, we want to have some attack function, some movement, but each of the individual enemies may have some things different. For example, some basic slime could have just some easy attack, some zombie could be rushing towards the player, it might have some special abilities and like this you can just define one class that has the variables and functions that all of the enemies are sharing and for each of the enemies you can then provide a different implementation. Third way to make your code more cleaner is to create your own data types such as struct or class. Before I started creating my own data types, managing the data was really painful. Let's say that you have a list of levels and for each of the level you also have a score that you will gain once you finish it. So before I knew about it, I would create two lists where one will be storing the integer of the level and second one will be storing the XP that you will gain from it. Or I would also have a third list that would be storing the number of enemies in each level. But what is a lot better way to do it is to create a class or a struct that will be holding the index of the level, then the XP that you will gain from it, the enemy count and you can easily add as many variables that you want and then easily create list of these classes. Fourth way to achieve high quality code is to split your code into many functions that you will be able to use independently. So you can have one function that we have just created, let's say for the movement, but at some other time you may also want to use it so we can just call it and you don't have to be copy and pasting the code again. Even when I have some code, let's say for my player, and I want him just to move, to rotate towards mouse, to shoot, and all of that stuff should be happening in update, then I still create all of these private voids, where one can be for the shooting, second one for the movement, and so on, and I just call them in update. So that the update function is not thousand lines long, you can just split it into individual functions, and the best way to make them is to make them generic, so that they can work with any data type. And this is all for decoupling of the code. Second part is about learning all of these C-sharp features, which will also help you to write lot less code and make your games more effectively. You obviously don't have to be learning all of these features just today, you can do it just one by one. The first useful C-sharp feature is a dictionary, which will allow you to assign a value to some key. This can be for example used for some grid of values, let's say some heat map, so we will have a big dictionary containing all of the positions on the grid and to each of the position you can assign some heat value. 
Second useful feature are enums, which just allow you to define your custom types. So you can let's say define a enum for the game state, and you can then define state game over, state is playing, state paused, state boss, and all of these different states that you will have in your game. So then instead of having multiple boolean values for all of these checks, if the player is somewhere in the leaderboard, if he is playing the game, if he is fighting the boss, you can just have one enum that will tell you the game state. Or you can also use it to define your weapon types, so you can have a axe, sword, pickaxe, and so on. Third useful feature are actions and events. So we can just subscribe many functions to one event, then you can call it and something will happen. This can be used for example when you have some score counter and each time that enemy dies you want to increase the score, so you can just subscribe some function that will increase the score to the action and then on all of these enemies once they die you can just call the action. Fourth useful feature are generics with which you can make your functions take any data type you want. These are for example used for the lists so you may notice that when you are creating a list, you are specifying of which type the list is. The fifth useful feature are coroutines, which are just used to wait for some time. So they can be used for some cooldowns, such as shooting cooldown, enemy spawner cooldown, and so on. Third part of writing clean and readable code are some naming conventions. The main thing here is to stay consistent. So let's say that for all of your private variables, we'll be starting with a underscore. Or when you are creating some variable, at the end you will say if it is a transform, game object, image, or which type it is. So first, all of your variables should be descriptive and they should follow these same rules. Don't be afraid to make the name for your variable, let's say three words long, if it is needed. The second naming convention is that bools should sound as questions and functions should sound as statements. So your boolean for the player if he is jumping shouldn't be called just jumping, but let's say is jumping. And the function for the player to move shouldn't be called should move, instead you can just call it move. The third part of naming conventions to keep in mind is related about how you sort all of your scripts, so you should also use namespaces. This will make sure that when you have let's say two or more classes with the same name, there will be no conflicts. Namespaces are pretty much like folders and you are already using them when you are importing some libraries into your c -sharp script, when you are telling using unit engine and so on. Fourth way to make your code more readable is to add some comments, but you obviously don't want to be commenting stuff that is obvious, you just want to give comments so that once you read it after a year, you still understand the code. And you definitely don't want to be commenting the old code because you are thinking that after a week you will get back to it because you probably won't. Fourth part is about variables and functions accessibility which will just help you to make your code safe. So generally you should be making your functions and variables the least accessible you can. So pretty much always they should be private if you can make them, if you can't you should make them public, if you can't even make them public you should make them static and so on. The best way to protect your public variables is to provide it a setter and a getter, so you can give it private set, which means that you will be able to set the variable only from the script where you have created it, and you can give it public get, so all of the other classes will be able to access it, but not change it. And if you can keep your variable private, but you still need to see it in the inspector, you can use the serialize field attribute. And the other way around, if you have a public variable and you don't want to see it in the inspector, you can use the attribute hide in inspector. The static variables that I have been talking about can be really useful, but you definitely shouldn't be making all your variables static. What static means is that the variable will be accessible in all your class even without defining from which class you want to take it. This can be useful for creating some important variables such as score, or for creating actions so that you can call them from any object. And static variables are also often used to create singletons, which is just an object that you will always have just one of in the scene. So you can create singleton for example for your inventory manager and it will make it that you can always easily grab a reference to the inventory manager. And this is all for the variables and functions accessibility part. I also have two bonus tips for you. The first one is to use scriptable objects 
which can just hold some data and you can easily edit them in your project, which can be particularly useful, for example, when creating some weapons. So you can define that each of the weapons will have some fire rate, some damage, and then in your project, you can just create multiple instances of the weapon scriptable object and define different damage, fire rate, and so on for all of your weapons. And the second tip is to use some kind of version control, such as Plastic STM or GitHub, which will allow you to save your work to the cloud so that you can download it from any computer, you can share it with your friends, or you can go back if you have messed up on something. If there is anything else that you would add to this long list, how to make your code clean, multipurposeful and readable, let me know down in the comments. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.